Hello and welcome to this video. So in this video we'll be talking about REF and RREF. So what does that even mean? So I mean that just kind of just kind of threw it out of nowhere. So earlier let's just kind of introduce the idea of what this even means first of all with some little bit of background. So earlier we talked about the idea of a matrix and the idea of elementary rule operations. And we also talked about the idea of an augmented matrix and the coefficient matrix. We also talked about the fact that you can change any matrix to using elementary row operations and, and those were the fact that we could interchange rows. We could scale a row or we could add a multiple. So add a multiple of one row to another. Okay, so just be, to be very clear, these were the elementary row operations. So let me just go ahead and write that down. So elementary row operations. Okay, so this is what we talked about last time with the idea of matrices. So we can always transform any matrix to another kind of matrix by using elementary row operations. So, and we also talked about the fact that any matrix could be converted back and forth between the system of equations. So for example, something like three, or let's speak this more clear, something like three, minus 10, 6, negative 1, like that, and then 1, 0, 9, and negative 5, and then negative 4, 1, negative 9, and 2. And if you augmented this with 3, negative 12, and 7, we can rewrite this as a system of equations by going 3 times x1, minus 10 times x2, plus 6 times x3, minus x4 is equal to 3. Then we get x1 plus 0x2, so that doesn't matter, plus 9 times x3 minus 5 times x4 is equal to minus 12. Then negative 4x1 plus x2 minus 9x3 plus 2x4 is equal to 7. So you can always convert back and forth between this matrix and this system of equations. And because we can use elementary row operations to change back and forth between the matrix, we can go ahead and solve a system of equations using elementary row operations. Because using elementary row operations in the matrix will also directly affect this system because they share the same kind of coefficients and the same kind of formatting. Now, how do we, you know, use elementary row operations and what does this even mean? Okay, so the idea with this thing is to talk about the concept of reduced row echelon form and row echelon form. So reduced, so REF, as I just mentioned, is row echelon form. So what does that even mean? We'll talk about that in just a second. So ECH, E-L-O-N, form. And the other one is known as reduced row echelon form, which would be quite literally just the same thing. So reduced row echelon form. Okay, what is the difference between these two things? Well, let's just go ahead and scroll down a little bit. So here's a definition of row echelon form and reduced row echelon form. So let's just kind of read this very slowly. So a matrix, and it, and it can be any matrix, it doesn't have to be necessarily augmented, is said to be in reduced row echelon form if it satisfies all of the following conditions. So if there's any rows of zeros, then they're at the bottom of the matrix, okay? So if a row doesn't consist of all zeros, then its first non-zero entry from the left, so from the leftmost, is a one. Okay, so this is very important. This thing is known as a leading one. 
So leading one is essentially just, just the first entry in a matrix reading from left to right in the first row. And in any two successive rows, neither of which contains all zeros, so any non-zero rows, the leading one of the lower row, so going this way, is to the right of the leading one from the higher row. So they're kind of going, going in a staircase fashion. So they're kind of going like this. So this is one to the right, this is one to the right, this is one to the right, and so on. Okay, and if a column contains a leading one, then all under entries of that column are zero. Okay, and if only the first three conditions are satisfied, then it's said to be in row echelon form, or REF. And this would be RREF. Like so. Okay, now that might seem very confusing at first, so let's just write down a few examples of what I'm exactly talking about. So, for example, these matrices are seen to be in row echelon form. So, let's just write down a few examples of this. So, 1, 0, 0, negative 6, 0, 0, 9, 1, 0, 1, negative 4, 0, uh, 1, and 0, negative 5, and 2. Okay, let's do another one of these. I'll talk about these matrices in a second, so let me just go ahead and write these down. So the next one is 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 5, 3, 1. And let's write down the last one. So it'd be 1, 0, 0, 0, negative 8, 1, 0, 0. 10, 13, 0, 0, 5, 9, 1, 0, negative 3, 12, 1, and 0. Okay, so all of these matrices are in row echelon form, or REF. So let me just write that down. So row echelon form. So, REF. Okay, why is that? Well, let's take a look at our definitions for a second. If there are any rows of all zeros, then they're at the bottom of the matrix. Well, here, for this first matrix, that's not really anything relevant, so whatever. But in the last matrix, the row of all zeros is indeed at the bottom of the matrix, so that's all good. And just to be very clear, that's a zero, not a six. Okay. If a row does okay, so this definition works for all three of them. Here there is no rows of zero. Again, there's no rows of zero. And here the the row of zero is at the bottom, so that's good. So if a row does not consist of all zero in its first non-zero entry, then the first entry has to be a one. It is. So let's take a look. In the first row, if it's non-zero, then the first entry is a 1, which is true. So let's read that again. If a row does not consist of all zeros, its first non-zero entry to the left is a 1. Okay, well, that's certainly true. So it starts with, this is this is non-zero row. So it starts with a 1, starts with a 1, starts with a 1. Okay. In any two successive rows, so top to bottom, neither of which consist of all zeros, then the leading one of the low row is to the right of the leading right of the higher row. Okay, well, that's certainly true. So, for example, this one, it's to the right of this leading one. Same thing here. Here's the leading one here, and here's the next leading one right there. So, it's to the right. It doesn't have to be just one over, it can be any number of times over, as long as it's to the right. Okay, same thing here. The next leading one is directly to the right of this leading one. Same thing here. This leading one is to the right, so that's good. So here's the next leading one, here's the next leading one, again it's to the right. Next leading one, again it's to the right, so good. So rule 3 satisfied. However, these are not in reduced row echelon form. And the reason for that is because if this was in reduced row echelon form, then all the other entries in that column have to be zero. 
Well, as you can see, that's not the case here. In this leading one, for example, this is a 9. This needs to be a 0 in order for this to be in reduced, echelon, in reduced rule echelon form. Similarly here, this thing has to be 0, and this thing has to be 0. And because this isn't true, well, as a result, this isn't in reduced rule echelon form. Similarly for this leading one, this has to be 0, and this has to be 0. It's not. So, once again, not, not reduced rule echelon form. And similarly here, this is a leading one, but this has to be 0. This has to be 0. This has to be 0. So, as a result, well, that's not in reduced rule echelon form. Okay. And for you might be walking and asking, why isn't this leading one? Well, the reason this isn't a leading one is because remember, for a, to, this to be a leading one, it has to be one to the right of the one that's higher. So this leading one has to be right here. So as a result, this is not a leading one. Okay. So hopefully that made sense. Now let's talk about some matrices which are in reduced Reichland form. So I'm just going to erase that and just put ref. And I, w I will leave that in red. Okay, now let's talk about another one which is in reduced rule echelon form. Well, that's going to be 1, 0, 0, 1. 0, 0, 0, 0. Okay, let's talk about another one. So this one is going to be 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. 0, 1, 0, negative 8, 5, 0. And let's talk about the last one. So let's actually we'll do two more. So the another one would be 1, 0, 0, negative 7, 0, 0, then 10, 0, 0. And the last one, well, it's going to be the following 1, 0, 0, 0. 9000 zero, 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 0100 zero, 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 one, and negative 2 16 3 and 1 well okay why is this in reducible rational form well you can check for yourself that this these matrices already satisfies conditions 1 to 3, so there's something wrong with that. Well, but for card condition 4, well, all the entries above or below the leading one have to be 0. Yep, yep. In this case, these are all rows of 0, so it doesn't really matter here. Okay, what about the next one? Yep, yes, yes. There's no leading one here, so we don't really care about that. Okay, yes, this is generally true here, so that's okay. Yes, this is okay, that's okay, this is okay, this is okay. So once again, this is all good. This is not a leading one because of the fact that this has to be one below and there's no more rows, so that, that doesn't even matter anymore. So yes, these are all in reduced row echelon form. So let me just go ahead and write that down. So this would all be in reduce row echelon form or sometimes it's pronounced as row reduce echelon form it's the same thing okay with that this this is just a very short video considered talking about the idea of row reduce echelon form so that concludes this video if you have any questions about the idea of row echelon form or reduce row echelon form let me know in the comments and i'll be happy to answer but otherwise, if this video helped you, please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe, and I'll greatly appreciate it. Thank you all so much, and have a great day.